So, some of you asked me how to, uh, if I would be kind enough to share my code with you, and I'm going to do that on github.com. So I'm just going to show you how you actually share code with, with friends. Um, and uh, I'm going to do it now because we're going to end up doing the same for OpenShift anyway using Git. We're going to share code with OpenShift. So, uh, well, here's the problem. You guys want my code. And I have it here locally on my machine, and since I don't give you guys access to my machine, we're going to use what we call a common repository to work together. So I'm going to somehow be able to send my code up here to github.com, and you guys are going to be able to pull it down on your machines. And then if you guys um, wanted to join my uh, project, you might be able to change code here. Uh, you make some changes and then you could send it back to the repository and I could then pull it down to my machine. Now I could make some changes and when I'm ready and I feel everything is great, I could push it now over to OpenShift and then OpenShift can deploy it using some build scripts uh, to our production environment to show it to real users here. So that's kind of what we're going to try and do now. I'm going to create a repository in GitHub that you guys can start getting my code from using clone. So how do we do this? Well, step one is to actually create an account on GitHub. So if you don't have one already, go in and make one. It's free, so happy days. And when you create the account on github.com, you can go in and create a new repository. So I'll do that. I do that by pressing the plus and saying create new repository. And in here, I'll give it a name. Let's call it the course planner. Very, very simple. It's public because anybody can clone it, get it if they want to, and then let's just create it here. There we go. I get some kind of link here. I'm going to use that later. Let's just stay on this page for now because here's actually how you'll take your current project and paste it um, into your common repository. So again, I've created this guy now here, and then it gives kind of an explanation. How do you take the code, this, the code you already wrote, and pull it up here so others can take it. That's kind of the list of information here. So let's do the, just that. I just covered it into a notepad so you guys can see it all the time. Going into um, my command prompt here, and then I'm going to say, I have the course planner, so I'm going into my course planner and doing a deer. This is pretty much the entire project, so you need to be in there before you run any of these commands. So step one for me is kind of to make a course planner file and readme file that's not required but it kind of helpful you can write stuff in there like why did you make the project what is it all about so let's just do it then you do a git init init that's kind of for us to make the dot git folder that's going to be kind of a way for us to know what's changed down here be between these two guys what's the difference so the git file knows everything that that's been changed so we can have version so we can merge so we can update code, it, it knows everything between these guys, what's the difference, right? That's the git folder. So that's been created here. And then we're going to add the readme file um, to the code. So if, if I do git status now, that's another command you can use, git status, then I can see all the files that are not added locally yet. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we kind of in this local repository, we have to say, what do you actually want to stage to be sent up here? And you have to add that to say that I want to send it up there. And everything you add, you can then commit saying that it's ready now to be sent to the server. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to add everything by doing a git add everything. Don't worry about the star saying everything because we have a git ignore file. Let me show you that one. Now a git ignore file is a way for us to, um, to make sure we don't add everything. And here you can see the git ignore file. We don't wanna add all the node modules. Why not? Let's have a look at node modules. It's a huge set of libraries. It's actually all the things we're using behind the scenes. We do not wanna add that to our git repository because it would just explode in size. There'll be so many megabytes up there. We don't need those. Public folder, temp folder, client, Bio components, we don't need to add that either. Let's go up here on the client bio components. Again, a lot of default things that we pull anyway using our NPM request. We talked about that earlier. So we are now ignoring some files so we can just add everything in here. So now I've added all my files and if I do a git status again, you'll see that now there's a lot of 
green files in here, make sure that there are nothing here saying power components or node modules. And that looks fine for my, my usage here. Okay, then we do a commit. That means now we're going to actually locally commit the files, meaning that we've staged them, we prepared them to be sent into our common repository. And then the last command is we add the origin to from here to our repository. So we, we are kind of making the link between these two guys here. We're making a link back and forth here. Okay, so that's what we're doing now. Don't worry, it's not this complex when we're going to use it. This is just for setting it up the first time. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to push all our code from here to the Git repository in the cloud. And it needs a username here, so I'll just put that one in, enter, and then it needs some kind of a password. There we go.